Hey pre-med, in this video we're going to talk all about the common ion effect and how it's tested on the MCAT. Solutions problems in general can be challenging because they require a really solid foundation in how and why solutions behave the way they do. The common ion effect is one of those foundational concepts, so you'll want to master this by testing. I'll also show you some tricks in this video that I use to make questions easier to answer in 5A Solutions in Electrochemistry. As always, let's do some definitions first. The common ion effect is a phenomenon in chemistry that describes how we can impact the solubility of a solution by adding ions that are already in the solution. That drives us back to the left or precipitating our solids back out of solution. Now, while we're usually using the common ion effect to decrease solubility, we'll talk about how we can use these principles to increase solubility and how pH can play into this phenomena. The common ion effect is a derivative of the thermodynamic Le Chatelier's principle, which states that if we disturb a reaction by increasing the reactants, we're going to drive it towards the products, or forward or to the right. If we increase products, we're going to drive that reaction back to the left or to the reactants. We'll see how Le Chatelier's principle comes into play with the common ion effect, both forwards and backwards in these reactions. Overall, though, I want you to remember that Le Chatelier is all about re-establishing equilibrium, kind of like a seesaw that's always trying to find that balance point. Okay, let's see the common ion effect and Le Chatelier's in action by working through some common dissolution reactions. All right, we're going to start with this ionic compound, calcium chloride. Oftentimes on 5A or solubility questions, they'll give you a compound and they'll talk about how it ionizes in solution without showing it to you. So a trick I always do is no matter what, I always draw out the dissolution reaction, including the molar coefficients, just so I can see what's going on and what ions I'm working with. So the dissolution reaction here would be calcium ion, Ca2+, plus, aqueous, right? We assume we're dissolving it in water, liquid, and chloride ions, which is just minus one, and so there's two of them, two chloride ions, aqueous. Awesome, so here we have our dissolution reaction. This is our base reaction, and usually what they would say on an MCAT style question is that we have a saturated solution of calcium chloride. That's gonna be our starting solution. And then they might say, hey, we're gonna add in NaCl, sodium chloride. So NaCl, again, we'll draw it out, starts as a solid, and then it's going to ionize into one sodium ion and one chloride ion. Again, both an aqueous solution here. Okay, so now we have these two ionic reactions in solution together. And I want you to look for, is there a common ion? Are there uh, products that are the same? And sure enough, we have chloride ion and chloride ion. So by dissolving sodium chloride into this saturated solution of calcium chloride, we've done what to the chloride concentration? If you said increase, you're absolutely correct. We've increased it. Now, based on Le Chatelier's principle that we talked about at the beginning of this video, what direction are we gonna drive this equilibrium? Back to the left. My little mnemonic here is up and away with the arrows for Le Chatelier's, right? If we have more products, we're going to shift our equilibrium back to the left to balance things back out. So that's one of the ways we can describe this reaction that we've shifted to the left. Left shift. We can say that we've moved towards reactants. Towards reactants. These are all possible answers to this question, right? And they say, what would happen if we added in sodium chloride? Another way we could describe this is that we've precipitated out more calcium chloride. We've created more calcium chloride solid out of the saturated solution. So we've increased precipitate. All of these are ways of describing what we've done to adjust this reaction based on this common ion. That's what the common ion effect is. The final way we could describe this is that we've decreased the molar solubility, molar solubility of the chloride ion, right? We've decreased the molar solubility of the chloride ion, driven it back to the left. 
Now it is important to note that we have not changed the equilibrium. All right, so the equilibrium constant for a dissolution reaction is Ksp, solubility product constant. And this is kind of like a Keq. It's a Keq equilibrium constant for these dissolution reactions. And what's really important to note is that the common ion effect does not change the Ksp. Because again, the whole point of the common ion effect, Le Chatelier's, is to re-establish that equilibrium. So the net result is that the Ksp will not change, but the molar solubility in this case will decrease. Now, that example we just did was the exact definition of the common ion effect, where we've added in a common product ion, thereby driving the reaction back to the left and decreasing the solubility. Our next example isn't exactly the common ion effect, but we can practice the exact same principles to actually drive a reaction forward. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we're still starting with our same saturated solution of calcium chloride, but this time our ions that we're going to add in come from the compound called barium carbonate. All right, so let's ionize barium carbonate and see what it forms. So we're going to get barium, and barium, like calcium, is a group 2 ion, so it's going to be 2 plus, and then carbonate, when it forms an ion, forms CO3, 2 minus. Knowing these common ions, uh, both the compounds and how they form ions, is really important on test day. All right, so looking at these two ions, we can see barium carbonate, neither of those are common ions with our calcium or our chloride. So we're thinking, all right, not much of an impact, right? However, we also want to think about possible new compounds, ionic bonds, that can form between these ions. So another common ionic compound is calcium carbonate. All right, so calcium carbonate CaCO3, is a common ion that's got a very low Ksp, which means it's not very soluble and likes to precipitate out. So if we have calcium in solution and carbonate ion in solution, you know what's likely going to form? Calcium carbonate. In doing so, what is that doing to the calcium ion concentration in the solution? If you said it decreases, you're absolutely correct. We're going to decrease the calcium ion concentration in the solution because it's now forming this new compound and leaving the solution, leaving the situation, right? And so when a product is decreased, what direction are we going to drive? Forward and to the right, right? So down and towards, up and away. So we can see here that we're actually going to drive this reaction forward to maintain the equilibrium because we're losing some product. Again, in terms of words that could come up in the answer choices, this means that we're decreasing precipitation, right? Increasing solubility, driving to the right, right? Driving right, or driving towards products, right? Increasing products, driving towards products. All right, and again, the KSP is not going to change because we're just maintaining this equilibrium, making this adjustment to return us to that same equilibrium value. So like I said, this is not technically common ion effect because common ion effect by definition decreases solubility, but see how it's exactly the same principles whereby adding an ion changes the solubility of the solution. In this case, we're adding an ion that creates a new compound resulting in a decreased concentration of one of the products, driving the reaction forward. Both are fair game on the MCAT. I've seen both show up. So it's important to know that we can go both directions with this phenomena. All right, next up, we're going to do an MCAT style practice problem that involves pH and how it can impact solubility reactions. Before we do, I'm Amanda Brem, founder of The Brem Method, and I've been coaching students towards their MCAT goals since 2019. Please remember to subscribe to this channel to get more videos on MCAT content, test taking strategies, and mental fitness tips to help you perform your best on testing. And if you'd like more interactive lessons like this one, including passage strategy and personalized support from me and my assistant coaches, please check out the next cohort of my MCAT course. The link is in the caption below. All right, give this practice problem a try on your own first by pausing this video, and then we'll come back together and walk through it step by step. 
Okay, so this problem states that a researcher has a fully dissolved mixture of calcium hydroxide, CaOH2, and calcium sulfate, CaSO4, and wants to separate the two salts by precipitating the calcium hydroxide. So not only do they want to separate it, they want to separate it specifically by making the calcium hydroxide turn back into a solid. Which of the following would be the best separation procedure? All right, and then we've got some funky things. We've got increasing and decreasing pH, adding dilute calcium chloride to the solution, and diluting the solution with distilled water. Before we do anything, my recommendation is to write out the dissolution reactions. Even if you think you know it, it just helps so much to visualize what's going on and what ions we're working with. So let's do that together. Calcium hydroxide, OH2, is going to draw out to be Ca2 plus and two OH minuses. Not writing in the aqueous and solids, but you guys know that that's true. We now have calcium sulfate, SO4, right? And that's going to be calcium two plus again and SO4 two minus. All right, so absolutely we have a common ion effect here, but that's not really what they're testing us on, right? They want to ask, they're asking us, hey, how could we drive this reaction back to the left, right, to precipitate it out as a solid without impacting the calcium sulfate, right? So we, we want to impact reaction one without impacting reaction two. It's going to be a little tricky. So we're going to have to figure out how to do that by going through the answer choices. Now, I'm going to tell you this as a general rule. When we're talking about 5A dissolution reactions and we're talking about adjusting the solubility, Diluting the solution is not going to impact this, all right? Diluting both of these solutions is not going to make one precipitate out versus the other. So we can eliminate that. That's out of scope. It's not one of our drivers of common ion effect or Le Chatelier's principle here. So now we're left with increasing or decreasing the pH and adding dilute calcium chloride to the solution. And maybe you're like, well, calcium chloride, that looks like common ions. I want to try that first. Sure, let's start there. But what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to ionize this guy as well. So I'm gonna do this in green. We need to ionize this, calcium chloride. We've used this guy now three times. Calcium two plus plus two Cl minus. All right, so we have more calcium ion. So absolutely, you're like, yep, this would definitely work. We'll increase our calcium ion concentration. That would absolutely drive this reaction back to the left. But there's a wrinkle. What is it going to do to this solution? It's also going to drive it to the left, right? Because it also has a calcium ion. So even though this is absolutely true, adding in calcium chloride would definitely drive our reaction back to the left, which is what we want. It will also drive our calcium sulfate back to the left. And our goal here is to separate these two. Right? So it's really important to read the setup of these questions. This is asking us to separate these reactions, not just what would drive them both to the left. So even though this is almost a good answer, it's not actually answering the research question of a separation. So this would not be a good method because it would precipitate both, right? Both compounds, not just one. All right, so now we're left with dealing with pH. So the first one is, increasing the pH by adding dilute NaOH. I will let you know guys on test day, they may not have included this. All right, they may have just said adding dilute NaOH and you should know that that's increasing the pH, right? So let's ionize this one, all right? Let's ionize NaOH just like we would anything else even though it's an acidic, um, it's an acid or a base, right? Acidic or basic compound, it's still going to ionize, right? I like to think of acid-base chemistry as just a subtype of solution chemistry. So we have Na plus and OH minus. Now check it out. Is there a common ion there? Yeah, right? OH and OH. So that's going to increase the products, drive us back to the left, and it's not impacting either of these ions, right? We're not impacting these. Sodium is an inert ion, it's not going to interact with anything. And so these guys are going to be safe. And the OH is absolutely going to increase this concentration of OH minus here and drive us back to the left. So A is looking real good. All right, real good. But let's go through um, our answer option B just to really make sure we understand it. So we have HCl. HCl would ionize, I'm drawing nice and small, H plus and Cl minus. 
Okay, so now let's look at these ions. All right, so for H plus, H plus and OH minus interact with each other, but you know what they form? Water, right? So in this case, the H plus would actually interact with the OH minus to take it out of solution, form water, which would drive us forward, which is opposite what we're looking for, right? We're trying to precipitate the calcium hydroxide, not make it more soluble. So this would actually be opposite here. Now, I just want to confirm, they could have just said increasing the pH because increasing the pH does increase the relative concentration of OH minus, and that would do the same thing as adding in NaOH, right? Or they could have just said adding in NaOH, right? I included both of these descriptions here because both are fair game on testing. All right, so we can see here that pH can impact common ion effect questions if and only if one of the product ions is going to be impacted by H plus concentration or OH minus concentration. So be on the lookout if that's one of your answer choices to check your reaction and see if that's going to impact the direction and the solubility of the reaction. And that was common ion effect on the MCAT. If you found this video helpful, please share it with your pre-med community. Remember, studying for the MCAT is hard and we all need a little help. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.